Hello and welcome to the MBSU Reviews. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I will drink from this teacup. I, that's how I sound when I drink from a teacup. It's totally legit. <laughs> Alright, DJ. And also joining us is Sapphire Heart Song. Teacup? Can, can I have some silver, please? Yeah, I'll just mail you the entire teacup through the Postal Service within the span of our recording. Okay. If only we had that good a Postal Service, can you imagine? <laughs> oh, you could just always boom two bit. Oh, now you're making you think of Injustice too. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm watching that right now. I seen the cutscene, Superman. Ah, I know. Ah. So, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to cover season seven, episode two, all bottled up. So, in this episode, Starlight, Grimmer, and Trixie accidentally make the cutie map disappear, while the main six are on a friendship retreat. So, Starlight uses a spell to bottle up her anger until the map is retrieved. So, this is an interesting episode. Last week was episode 1, so in all technicality, this should be the second episode to the premiere. But since we didn't have a two-parter, this was kind of a normal thing. Well, still, this was shown after the first episode, so it was a two-parter premiere, which is kind of strange. But first impressions are in order. Silver. Well, I say that anything with a great and powerful Trixie is never ordinary. Uh, True. Okay, I actually do find at least one connection between this episode and the previous. The concept of imagination. (laughs) Imagination. Imagination. The first episode, Celestial Advice, featured Twilight imagining the different scenarios showing that she's got a very active and perhaps terrifying imagination. This one, it begins with Starlight giving Trixie advice on imagining the teacup in her mind to perform really high-level magic, and perhaps even the imagination to take your feelings and bottle them up in an actual bottle. (laughs) So I have to wonder if the most powerful unicorns are also the most imaginative. But this one is a lot of fun. The main six are just sort of there for a song, and the song is nice, but the real focus here is on... Starlight and Trixie, and poor Starlight, I've been in her situation trying to be nice and friendly when really you just want to scream. (laughs) And you could see the physical toll it takes. Trixie was perhaps a little bit more frustrating because of her girl whatever. But it's so funny that poor Starlight, no matter what she does, she just ends up messing with ponies no matter what. Yeah. It's not her fault. No matter what. It's not her fault. Uh, well, cool. that that and more recent episodes, thanks Canada, mm-hmm. just made me realize that even when she's trying to be a good pony, poor Starlight just seems to get forced into these roles. Thanks, Map. <laughs> yep. Also, when when you were mentioning the whole like um, who's a Moatsu? Like uh, you you try to act nice when really you just want to scream. Is that how you feel at work every day? I can neither confirm nor deny your question. <laughs> <laughs> Seppi, what about you? My thoughts on this episode. I I really liked it. I've actually been in situations where I've been Trixie and Starlight. Like, I've had my moments where I'm, like, trying to be all nice and giddy when a friend is trying to be frustrating. And I've been that friend who has been immensely frustrating. The importance here is communication. Anywho, um, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun to watch. We have all been there in that situation where we have been Starlight and we also have been Trixie at some point. So, to me, this episode felt real. And the lesson or the way that it's told here is really, really interesting. Having Trixie be a part of the, well, I won't say the main crew, but be part of Ponyville now is kind of awesome. And you just have to mention that she's not going around caravanning to locations. One of the few things in the future I hope to see is uh, Maud interacting with Trixie because, well, Trixie used to work at a rock farm. So that'll be interesting. And then and Starlight arranges a meeting between the two. Trixie's like, no, not you. <laughs> Any pony but you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, well, considering, um, <laughs> considering Igneous, or whatever his name was, was in the background or whatever when, uh, Trixie was showing that, you know, that flashback, yeah, yeah, there, there's probably some previous interaction. <laughs> Can you imagine Trixie trying to performance for Maud? <laughs> oh, God! Well... I am intrigued. <laughs> oh god, that that would be fun. <laughs> uh, but still, this episode was a lot of fun. Uh, but anywho, uh, let's head on to the full review. So if you have not watched this episode yet, pause here, watch the episode, and come back. Welcome back. So we start off with Starlight and Trixie in the Crystal Palace kitchen uh it looks like starlight here is going to make some cupcakes was it tea tea, tea cakes yes tea. what is a tea cake i never heard of a tea cake before well it is a it's cake. a cake but you have with, with tea. tea but mm, wouldn't normal cup wouldn't any cake do i mean you can have a chocolate cake and some tea by the size like mm. Ah, uh, but Norman, you underestimate our ability to create superfluous names. After all, we have coffee cake. Coffee cake is coffee, coffee flavored it's, cake. We we have coffee cake, Norman. It's a thing. Just coffee let flavored it go. cake. It, da, 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 da. We have coffee flavored ice cream, so I don't want to hear it. I don't want to taste it. I do. What coffee ice cream tastes amazing? Yeah. <laughs> If you're Unless a sadist. Unless you're not a coffee person. Oh. Exactly! Oh boy. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's, it's like, look, if I, I don't like to drink the blood of my enemy, so if you ever be blood of my enemy's ice cream, do you think I'd be like, oh golly gee, that'd be great! Well, maybe for Conan. Probably would. <laughs> oh wait, wait, I'm having the same of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ice cream <laughs> headache! Ah! <laughs> Uh, anywho, oh my god! While Starlight, somebody ought to make that though. Uh, well, somebody who who knows ice cream people make a suggestion in the suggestion box saying, "We want blood of your enemy's ice cream." It'll be red velvet. <laughs> but anywho, while Starlight is, like <laughs> well, Starlight is creating um, tea cakes. Trixie here is trying to perform a transmug transmodification spell or transmug. Transmuting, mm, how's that word saying? Transmogrification? Transmogrification, transformative, really, just transformative. But, uh, transmogrification just sounds cool. That's why Calvin and Hobbes used it. <laughs> yeah. So, in, technically, she's trying to turn a salt shaker into a teacup, but it's not working, and a star for advice. And the general advice is, picture how the teacup is going to be and then focus your power on the imagination or the image and create it and it's done uh, this has a lot of problems in terms of uh, physics because matter like you can't turn something into something without the proper balance thingy like alchemy oh yeah Edward Ellerick's off on the side going hacks I call <laughs> hacks yes Yes, but that, that's like too much logic in this. But anywho, after the advice, Trixie managed to turn Salt Shaker into a teacup. And well, she's really, really happy that she turns almost everything in the kitchen into a teacup. That joke will come back later to Hunt Spike. Very well. Everything comes back to Hunt Spike. It's like, every moment I live is agony, <laughs> Spike. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and well, um, Trixie does magic and somehow created a teacup poodle. What? And it ruins the tea cakes. But like, yay, Trixie! Trixie's amazing! Woo! <laughs> it's like, oh, don't mind the fact that she ruined all the tea cakes because friggin' Trixie's amazing! Woohoo! Although here's my, here's my question though. Why can't Miss Magical Fix just undo the squishing. You're telling me that she can warp time and space, fly from one end of Equestria to the other, uh, rip cutie marks from pe from others, but she can't unsquish a tea cake? Apparently not. Well, have you ever tried to fix icing on a cake before? It's not easy. 
Uh, okay, to be fair, even Twilight couldn't do it. Well, she barely did it. Yeah. But at the same time, too, if a teacup poodle runs amok around your cake, there's no saving it unless you're going to do time traveling. But she's not going to do time traveling. Come on. That's just very petty. Well, you wouldn't use time traveling to fix some petty uh, problem, would you? Would you? If a teacup poodle barks in the forest and no one's going to hear it, does it make a yip? <laughs> I don't know. But anywho, um, Trixie got this problem solved. And that's with a bag of pretzels. Yay! Because that's what everybody needs. Pretzels. A bunch of pretzels. Next uh, thing you know, she's going to give up her camper crackers too. Never. Yeah, but it seems that uh, foreshadowing is afoot while... Starlight here is angry. Suddenly, red smoke appears from her horn. And, boof, that's, that's for evil foreshadowing. Oof, scary, scary. Although what it really says is that the pretzels aren't the only thing that's salty in that room. <laughs> ah, somebody played competition in Overwatch. <laughs> uh, so, we join the main six and Spike and Starlight and Trixie. As they send them off to the Friendship Express. And saying how amazing that the six of them are going to spend time together at the Friendship Retreat. Or what was it called? Friendship... Um, I'm trying to find the word here. It, it was called the Friendship Retreat. And, and they're so predictable <laughs> that even Starlight and Trixie can predict when they're about to sing a song. Yeah. And it wasn't even a good song. Hey, the song was good. No, it wasn't. It was, it was serviceable. It was fun. Anywho, um, after the whole banter saying, okay, bye bye, Spike's not joining them because, well, Spike got comics to read. And, well, before they leave, uh, Trixie hands out the pretzels to Twilight, which is kind of like, yeah, uh, how thoughtful, great pretzels will never go hungry. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, bye bye. Yeah, that was rather awkward. <coughs> Just as it is now? Yes, as usual. It's always awkward. <laughs> it's always <laughs> awkward at the Ponyville train station. Oh, yeah. Do you see the kind of weirdos that come through that place? The last time I saw one, it involved a blue draconicus. Yes, and a draconicus that was sending the train into a fiery mountain. Oh, yeah, that's true that. <laughs> but, anywho, uh, after they leave, um, our main star for the episode gathers up at the crystal map table thingy and Trixie wants to learn a disappearing magic trick because she's a magician so disappearing acts are always in their forte. Um, Starlight reminds Trixie or just points out to Trixie that there's no such thing as a disappearing magic rather teleportation. So Trixie wants to learn and well Starlight tells how to do it, and Trixie here fumbles her way into doing it very, very poorly. Well, good thing Spike ran away. Well, here's my question. What, what has Trixie been doing up until now? She's, she's a disappeared and disappeared in smoke bombs. Trixie is very odd in that she's running a magic show and she's a unicorn, which basically means she's doing what everyone thinks she should do anyway. Mm. If she were an earth pony, this magic show would be a little more huzzah. But the whole point of a, a magic show is illusion. You look like you teleport. You don't actually teleport. Well, here's the thing I think Trixie uh, picked up from the last time she did magic. And that was teleportation spell is important or else I'll get eaten up by a manticore. Well, th you don't launch yourself at the manticore. Well, she did it. <laughs> You're, that's just it. She's not very smart. Well... <laughs> She's like those people who, God rest their souls, try to do the catching the bullet in your mouth trick by actually trying to catch a bullet with their mouth. Did you do that? They don't do that. Well, <laughs> well, Silver, to be fair, the great Houdini was was a friggin' unicorn. Really? I thought I, I thought I saw him being an Earth pony. No, no. Let let me grab the thing, and it'll show he he was a unicorn. All right. It is true that several magicians lost their lives trying to duplicate the catch a bullet trick. They didn't quite understand. See? Unicorn. Let's see here. I need to look some more pictures. I, I'm confused. Yep. No, he was a unicorn. Huh. 
but that trick is like it's it's like wrestling. It's not real. Well, okay, technically wrestling is real, but it it's all staged. The way it's done, it's like the bullet is pre. It's in the mouth beforehand. Ay, ay, ay. Well, some people didn't realize that, and unfortunately, it cost them their lives. Oy. Meanwhile, what? in our in our pursuits, we've we've cracked the code. Someone drew a comic that ex, that explained how Houdini got it. He just found the mirror pool, oh, God. cloned himself, and fired that into the Manticore's belly. <laughs> so that that's he's killed a lot of clones. Oh God. Oh my God! H- Houdini's a monster. Oh God! I, uh, <laughs> but anywho, let's continue on to this one here. So, a- anywho, Trixie wants to learn the disappearing act or the teleportation spell. Um, for you guys at home who don't know, teleportation spell in the MLP universe is a very hard spell to master. Even in the MLP. Tales of Equestria storybook telling game says it's hard. The further you go, the more points you need to succeed. But anywho, after explaining to her how to do it, which is focus, imagine the place where you want to put the item, which is in this case the apple, and teleport it there. Um, Trixie didn't hear the whole trick and kind of aimed for the table. So yeah, yeah, that's not good. And yet Trixie is strangely blasé about this. I mean, uh, this is where she becomes somewhat grating in the episode. She's just like, oh, whatevs. You just took away the thing that brought happiness and resolution to so many parts of Equestria. Girl, you're going to get lynched. Yep, yep, yep. But I I think to her, this is a normal occurrence, like uh, knowing... Her like oh uh, I I thought changing things this is nothing this is this is an everyday occurrence for the main six so yeah but still oof, talking about main six uh, we see them in Manhattan relaxing Rarity says oh I want a day at the spa and whatnot and tricks and Twilight says oh no it's not that kind of escape or retreat we're going to be stuck in a room for an hour trying to solve puzzles yay room escape. Wait, they're, they're watching the room? You're tearing me apart, Lisa! <laughs> I did not hit her. I did not. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Although, although, could we, like, briefly talk about it, like, and just skip over it since it has literally nothing to do with the episode, mostly? Well, it's a compare and contrast in friendships. You've got these longtime friends who are basically simpatico at this stage. It's hard for their friendship to be tested much further. But this is that contrast that against the new friendship. Now, let's face it, our main heroines did drive each other nuts a bushel in the opening seasons. Mm-hmm. They've ironed out some of the kinks. It's still possible to get on one another's nerves. Oh, yeah. I can definitely tell, like, driving up a wall. Honest Apple will... That's the one I was trying to avoid. Oh, come on. At this point, I just said a title. It's online. Yep. Okay. We're not going to talk about it. But anywho, uh, yeah. Sorry, we're not talking about it now, but still. I was like, yeah, you're skipping the show? Dude, wow. I was like, dude. I'm trying to think of a way to present it without spoilers, okay? Uh, it's okay, it's okay. I mean, here's the thing. Thanks to Canada, the season, or we're up to episode 10 right now. Thank you, Canada. As of this recording, we're on episode 11. So, yeah, time sure flies pretty fast. And I think the American release is only on, uh, if my video thingy wants to load, on episode Parental 6. Parental guidance. Yeah. That's, whew. But anywho, um, where was I? Yes, main 6, trap room, escape under one hour to beat Griffin record. Yay, that's the whole um, synopsis for the main 6. Yay. And they're best friends, even though they're at each other's throat at times. Yes. So back to the main story. Trixie teleports the table. Yay! <laughs> and uh Starlight noticed that, oh, um, range cloud above head need to deal with that. Goes to the kitchen and stuffs it in a bottle. And remember when I said those teacups? Yeah. Spike has to clean them all. <laughs> Aww. Poor thing. Although, what, what seeing that, all I can think of is the Dilbert cartoon. Let's see here. Hovering Cloud of Doom. 
I'll have to look this up, but basically a Dilbert cartoon, you get assigned to impossible task, you have a cloud of doom hovering over your head. <laughs> uh, ain't that life. Ain't it the truth? Yep. And the, o- the only way to get rid of it is to transfer. Transfer. <laughs> oh god, isn't that every curse? Anywho, this is, honestly there are days where I kind of wish I could have this, where I could have this cloud hanging over me, literally, so people would know, oh back off, he ain't one to talk to today. <laughs> Oh uh, boys, but but anywho, um, after explaining the whole situation to Spike, Spike goes off to see if the table or table is it? Yeah, let's say table. Table's in the castle. While Starlight and Trixie tries to find it in the town or wherever Trixie thinks it is, and the first place they go to is the jewelry store. Because Trixie thought of something shiny for herself. No, sorry. Uh, the first place was to get some, uh, nuts. What was it? Crackers? Nuts. I, I think it's nuts. Yes, yes, cinnamon nuts. Yes, cinnamon nuts. So after cinnamon nuts not there, they went to the jewelry store thinking, oh, I need something shiny. And no, nah, it's not there too. Oh, maybe apples. Because cinnamon nut and apple taste good with each other. Nice pairing. But not there too. Um, Matt Greeny Smith, by the way. And yeah, it's not there too. And Starlight gets angrier and angrier. And Trixie noticed that, hey, uh, what's that thing you stuff in your bag? Uh, let me see. And yeah, after a struggle, bottle breaks around the three people we've just met. Uh, Bulk biceps selling the cinnamon nuts, the jewelry store pony, and Granny Smith. And somehow they inherit Starlight's anger towards Trixie. And... Three, two, one, play song, and this is a really fun song. I like this song. I don't like the song, but I find it funny how, um, well, while the song is playing, <laughs> there's, there's also the moment where Trixie's trying to be killed, is, you know, ready to be murdered by these three ponies and whatnot because of Starlight's anger. That's the, that, that's pretty funny to me. Even though it's very, very, um, evil. <laughs> oh, wow. Also, another thing, I, I find it funny because my best friend, who I'm actually going to be reviewing this episode with later on down the line, uh, Hungry Soma, we, we got to the song and as soon as we were hearing it, we were like, kill it! Kill it, Dao! And, I don't know. It's one of those moments where you'd have to be there. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be. If you guys are screaming, kill it. I've, we're we're just... screaming, kill it. We're trying to... Okay, I, I found, like, the time where uh, Trixie was trying to be murdered by the three ponies or whatever. And, you know, we have this brief moment of, ah, thank God it's over. But no, the song played again, and we were just dying on the inside. Well, then again, I I can't criticize too much. Just wait till we get to hard to say anything. <laughs> uh, well, anywho. <laughs> anywho. Yes. Anywho. Uh, the chase is on. It is a fun contrast to see these, these six singing about what great friends they are. <laughs> Meanwhile, Starlight has inadvertently tried to kill her best friend. Yep. Uh, ain't oh. that true friendship? It's true friendship. Well, we've all, we all go through those rough patches, but it's a fun contrast. Yep. Uh, but still, um, while the main six finish singing and the, I'm just going to call him uninterested worker one says, Oh, that was a great song, but the games haven't end until you turn the key. And yeah, they, they did not break the record by two seconds. Two seconds, yeah, two seconds, it's like, pfft. I don't know, I, I can just hear manga comment in the back going, Griffin Master Race! <laughs> oh, boys. Um, and yet all I can think of is a follow-up comic a fan did where they the main six returned to do another attempt, but now the record is five minutes because Quibble Pants got to it first. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> God dang it. Uh, but anywho, uh, we go back to Ponyville where three ponies are trying to murder Trixie. Yes, see, that seems to be a theme for Trixie these days, getting murdered. 
And uh, Trixie says, I don't know you guys. What did I do? I didn't even do that. And Starlight steps in and says that it's me. Um, they're not angry at you, but I am. And she lets out her frustration and tells Trixie off. And Trixie, for her part, says she's sorry and she didn't know how she felt. And to be honest, how could Trixie not know? Because she's no mind reader. Um, you you basically just said something that contradicts yourself. Like, how could she not know? She's not a mind reader. It's like... Oh, my bad. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I was saying words, yes. To How fair, could Tr- she know is what you meant to say. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank you. But uh, to be fair, it's really how could Trixie miss the context of the situation? The, girl, the girl's got issues. Issues? Uh, well, Silver, there's people who are blunt. Like literally blunt who don't see people's uh, point of view or problems. They don't really care. So those people exist. And Trixie yes, could be call, one of them. We call them jerks. We call them jerks. Yeah. So Trixie's the jerk. <laughs> <sighs> but still, um, I, I like this lesson here because, well, the, to any problem, there's always a simple solution. Talk it out. This would have done well in Batman vs. Superman if they both just talk it out. But no, they had to fight, those idiots. But Norman, if they talk it out, it makes a boring movie. That's almost ninety nine percent of any entertainment. If you just talk it out, Ooh. it it'll end well. But come on, then they couldn't talk about Martha. Oh, why would you say that name? <laughs> because it's my mother's name. That is my mother's name. Oh, oh my God! This means we're brothers. <laughs> no. No. Uh, but anywho. Actually, actually, it'd be funny. It's like, it, all, villains now know Batman's safe word. Martha. Mar- Martha. Just say Martha and he'll stop trying to arrest you. <laughs> oh, why would you say that name? <laughs> Curse you, Joker. Why would you say that name? Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the line. Let's talk about the line that said a thousand ships a sailing. Okay. What is it? During the apology, Trixie says, The starlight I love is passionate, lively, and yeah, sometimes angry. <laughs> Those are my favorite parts of you. And everyone else is like, Trixie likes starlight's parts. Yeah, yeah. Ship, ship, oh, ship, 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 ship. I ship it to the moon and back. To the uh, Lula moon and back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 so uh, I'm shipping away. Um, set an open course for the Virgin Sea. <laughs> oh boy. But anywho, but anywho. Wait, wait. If they're going to the Virgin Sea, they won't come out the same way, right? I don't know. But anywho. They'll come out walking different. Oh god. Uh, but anywho, back on topic. Uh, <laughs> after the apology, everyone is saying, yeah, we're friends now, so we're all good. Yeah, we're straight. And everybody seems to be, well, okay, except Bulk, when he realized that his cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon nuts cart is broken. And no problem, we have the master of solving things with magic, Starlight, helping her. And I like this line from the jewelry pony. Hey, don't you work at uh, the spa? <laughs> and Bulk panics because, oh no, my other job. <laughs> I wear many hats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like this concept because it shows that, hey, they need to put a background character here just because of the situation. They could have picked from any one of the list of random backgrounds characters, but they picked Bulk. And knowing that he had a job, that is fun too. He always adds something new whenever he makes an appearance. We learn so much about him. So much. Oh, maybe, maybe Spy can get another deep tissue massage from him. Oh god, no. He'll walk funny indeed. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, Norman, I didn't know you shipped that way. No. But anywho, uh, Trixie now remembers where she, uh, what was the last place she taught or, 
imagine to put the table the thingy. Spa. Yep, of all the places. And the reason is because there, that is the place where they first met and bloomed their friendship from. So yay! Now, stand back, boys and girls, because Trixie is going to teleport the table back to the castle. <laughs> and Starlight stops her. No, 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 no! Yep. Free. And, well, after getting the table back to the castle, the main six arrive and, yeah, n- n- nothing happened. N- n- nothing, nothing. To- totally, like, the table didn't disappear and uh, end up to the spa. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Rarity says, hey, um, the spa's open. Why not go there for a relaxing deep tissue massage thingy, wherever it is that we do there. And Trixie says, quick, uh, do you have a spell that would make the spa ponies forget the map table was there <laughs> and this is my favorite part Starlight saying haven't you learned anything about using magic to solve problems no if we learn that lesson how will we ever have fun <laughs> oh gosh Trixie so meta I know indeedy <laughs> uh, doodle uh, so yeah this episode was fun a lot of fun a little awkward in the sense that here we were, so many episodes, it was time to get back to the main sticks. Between to there, to where and back again, then Celestial Advice, this was the time we were like, okay, I appreciate Starlight, I do think she can add a lot to the show, but let's take a little breather. Eat our space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Eat our space. Yep, true that, true that. But still, that was a fun episode. Like, um, I don't mind having the two-part... Uh, Focus on Starlight for a bit because, well, she was the hero of the previous season. At least let her have her fun here. And I don't know about I don't know if I'd say hero of the previous season. They all had their heroic moments. Sorry, I mean pre- uh, what I meant to say was hero of the uh, previous season's ender. Yes, there we go. So yeah, at least let her have the nice conclusion or wrap up for her arc there. Until she shows up in episode 10. Then we're going to have a lot of fun talking about that one. Oh boy, can't wait. Oh, there's just so much, so much to go on. Yep, yep. Uh, but anywho. Oh hmm. yeah. Anything to add on, Steppy? No, I don't think I have anything really to add on. I usually never do. Alrighty then. Uh, let's hit to the last topic, which is a final thoughts. Silver, what do you think? Well, this is a fun one. It gives it gives Trixie some fleshing out. It develops her, their dynamic together. The song provided a contrast for the climax. But of all the songs, this is not going to be one that will really stick out in my memory. I mean, winter rap is just going to blow it out of the water every time. Sorry, it just is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. But it was a lot of fun. And it did act, actually did flesh out unicorn magic a little more. Saying that you have to have a, me- a clear mental image uh, to affect certain spells or direct teleportation, which says something about Twilight and the distance she can go. Though she may not be the most mm, creative in terms of storytelling, she is. Uh, she does have a very vivid imagination. Mm-hmm. Right, quite vivid. Quite. Yeah, true. That was shown in season two, uh, lesson zero. Yeah, which actually, do, this is what undoes her most of the time. Her strength becomes her weakness as she drives herself insane. I know. And that insanity comes back in this season too. So, wow. I like that. I like that. But this was a fun, fun episode and I greatly enjoyed it. But by the end, I did have that feeling of, okay, I'd very much like to see our lead heroines lead for a little bit. <clears throat> Indeed. And Seppi? I'm sort of on the same part with my thoughts as Silver, although I have sort of noticed, like, even before, like, this whole unicorn magical development thing, that, in a sense, ponies are essentially, like, the three stages of mental health. Or, not mental health, just overall health. Unicorns are represented by mental health, uh, Pegasi social and Earth Pony physical. So I actually would like to dive into a, you know, discussion sometime discussing unicorn magic and, you know, just overall magic in the series. 
Oh, that is a very hard one to tackle on. Like, uh, generally you need some basic knowledge of magic or fantasy magic to begin even tackling that. Without that, you got no common ground to talk on. Well, we've got some development that we've been seeing throughout the, uh, episode that we could discuss on anyways. Yeah, probably. That, that's all I really have to say. <laughs> Alrighty then. And as for me, this episode was a fun slice of life episode. It fleshes out Starlight's character a bit. It fleshes out uh, Trixie's characteristics. And um, they kind of set the tone for Starlight and Trixie's friendship. Um, you could just imagine this two being the lead of their own show. Like first it starts out with this two... And then they add another friend into the mix. And then, well, you can have a very interesting sitcom involving these two right out of the back. My two mayors. da da da, da. <laughs> Yep. Uh, two Brooke mayors. Probably. But still, it's one of those things where, okay, I, I liked how they're going. And yes, um, what Silver mentioned, having these two is fun, but we need the main six back. And glad that we get them back in the next episode because the next episode is going to be starring our lovable purple alicorn. So, yay. And the demon spawn. Uh, yeah. But I knew, as for the lesson here, I like this lesson a lot. This lesson is a hard one to convey, yet the way they did it here was pretty good. Uh, well, that's my two cents. But anywho, Me. Silver... What are we going to do next week? Well, we're going to shift gears a little and talk about the show in its entirety mm. as we discuss its evolution since Lauren Faust's departure. Ah, and that would be a Patreon-sponsored video by myself, Lag. So join us next week as we talk about said topic because this is a really interesting one. I really want to see what you guys have to say about this. But anywho, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am Zizir Vakril. And I'm Sapphire Heart Song. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun and amazing review show. I, amazing would be not the right word. Fun. Fun and chaotic. That's usually our shtick, right? Yeah, almost. Eh? <laughs> but anywho, uh, we'll guys catch you next week. See ya. I will have the blood of my enemies before I become governor of California. <laughs> oh god. Free. Silver, do you have pent-up anger issues that you need to share with us? No, I just like to talk like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm.